I'm George and welcome to part 12 of the Horizon series. Now this week we're going to have a look at the Horizons deployment mechanism. Now before we jump into it we're going to have a look at some of the design aspects of it and how it works and how it was made. Uh, but I thought I'd sort of uh, give you a bit of a background how we arrived at this design and have a look at some of our previous designs. So let's have a look at the first uh, shadow deployment mechanism that we made. This is a few years old now. And that used the sort of traditional uh, push mechanism that would push the parachute out off the top of the um, tube. So this is the way the parachute would be loaded inside it. And then there's uh, a servo motor that would activate and then push it out. That would push out the nose cone with it. Now one problem with this was that uh, the nose cone had to be friction fitted into the top of the tube. Uh, now sometimes depending on the uh, weather, you had high humidity or different temperatures, that tube would expand or shrink and you'd end up with different friction. So in order to make sure that the parachute comes out, you have to have a strong enough spring to overcome the friction. Uh, the other problem, if the friction was too low, there was a real danger of drag separation. So that wasn't ideal. Now you can see that this tube was quite long to fit everything in. All of our electronics fit underneath it like this. We had the camera and the batteries deployments timer. So that was the first iteration. Then we went to the dark shadow uh, deployment mechanism. Now you'll notice this one's uh, quite a bit shorter than the shadow one. And what the main difference here was that we replaced the ejector plate uh, that we used here with a bungee system. So there's a couple of rubber bands inside uh, that hold up the top and then they push on these legs that help eject uh, the nose cone out. Now the parachute fits right in the middle here. So when it would eject the parachute, these legs would open, the parachute would fall out. This worked quite well and we've still used this uh, even recently. All the electronics uh, are mounted underneath. So they sit underneath like this. And we don't have that friction problem anymore because now the entire nose cone is held down by the servo motor. So there's no chance of drag separation and you don't need a lot of friction uh, at the top. So it makes it a lot easier to get the parachute out. Um, so like I said, this worked quite well, uh, but it was a bit unwieldy, uh, a little bit on the heavy side, a bit complex with the hinges. So the next iteration of this design uh, we used in our light shadow rocket. So almost identical um, with the bunchy system, but this time we replaced uh, the swinging arms with a solid frame. Now this worked quite well inside of uh, light shadow. Uh, the parachute would just sit in here like this and when it ejected, it would just fall out. So that, that worked quite well, but this was also a larger airframe. When, and again, I was gonna say, we had the electronics down the bottom, uh, same way we had with the dark shadow. Although that uh, system worked quite well with the two arms that, that with the solid frame, if you then reduce it down to the 60 millimeter one, uh, like we had on the shadow series, there's a real danger that the parachute could get stuck uh, inside of those legs. So then we went to the horizon system. Now the horizon system still has that same ejection uh, bungee cord inside, but there's only one of them. And you'll notice there's only one leg uh, that we use for this one. Uh, and the reason for this is the parachute sits in there like this inside of the tube. And when it comes out, it's free to fall out. Uh, the other major difference we've made, you can compare the height difference. So one of the driving forces was to try and get it even smaller. So here we can do a quick comparison of the three mechanisms. You can see how much shorter this one is. Uh, and that's because we moved all of the electronics from down here into the nose cone. There's ample space in the nose cone. Let me just pop that off. And there you can see all of the electronics. We're gonna have a close look how this is built and how that works. Uh, now that positive retention mechanism we've retained, but instead of holding the uh, frame down here, like we did with uh, light shadow and dark shadow, uh, the actual retaining mechanism uh, sits at the top because that's where the servo motor is. 
and then that just hooks onto the little holes at the top of the airframe. So that's what allowed us to shrink it even further. Uh, the other main difference is with the previous uh, frameworks we used uh, PVC and some fiberglass and um, plywood or balsa wood. For the Horizon one, we used mostly 3D printed framework. So that made it really easier. And when we needed a second one, we could always print another one very easily. So another aspect of the design that we decided to change was uh, with the previous design, we had a whole bunch of little holes all throughout the airframe. So we could use a skewer stick or something to turn on the electronics and camera. And that made it a little difficult. Sometimes you couldn't quite see the LED or couldn't quite find the button. And so for the horizon deployment mechanism, we decided to get away from that altogether. And you just remove the nose cone. Now you've got clear access to all of the electronics. You can easily see any displays. You turn it all on and before launch, pop the nose cone back on, do up a couple of screws and you're ready to go. Okay, so let's have a look how it's made. We first make the nose cone. Now this is just made out of fiberglass. The process is very similar to how we made the pressure chamber end caps. We just have the mold with a couple of balloons over it and then we apply a number of gauze to form the shape. When it's cured, we can remove it from the mold. This then gets sanded and trimmed. The very tip is just 3D printed out of PLA and that is epoxied into the fiberglass. Next we need to make the main body tube of the deployment mechanism. This again is made out of fiberglass since it doesn't need to withstand any internal pressure. We're using West Systems epoxy for all the fiberglass work. The tube itself is made out of six wraps of 85 GSM plain weave cloth. We're making a longer tube so that later we can cut it in half for the two deployment systems. When the tube is finished, we put it on the rotisserie again for a couple of hours to cure. The next day we can remove it from the mandrel, cut it to size and trim the ends. You've seen this before in the previous video, so we'll just skip that here. Next it was time to do some 3D printing. With this mechanism, we're trying to 3D print as much as possible, so it's easy and quick to reproduce. During the design process, we went through quite a few iterations before we finally got all the parts correct and working the way we wanted them. Next, we needed to fit the fiberglass sections to the 3D printed ones. Here we are fitting the nose cone to the main cup that forms the base of the entire mechanism. And here we're cutting an access hole for the camera lens. The lens just pokes out the side of the nose cone. Now this gives us minimal air drag without the need for a fairing around the lens. Here are all the final components that make up the deployment mechanism. So now let's have a look at how these go together and then we'll see how it all works. We start with one of the side panels and press the motor into it. No screws are necessary for this. Then we attach the servo timer to the other side panel. Next we put the batteries inside a sled. We can change the sled depending on the type of batteries we want to use. Next we insert the camera bracket between the side panels. Again, this just snaps in without screws. Then we insert the battery sled between the side panels and screw it down with a couple of screws. This holds everything together. Before we put the nuts on, we add the altimeter sled to the same screws and then screw everything together. The sled can be changed depending on the altimeter we're using. The entire top section is held together with only two screws. Next, we attach the retention lever sub-assembly. This just fits in between the two side panels. The whole mechanism is then screwed into the cup. The camera comes next. This just snugly fits into the bracket and gets locked into place with a piece of foam, which makes it easy to remove when we want to download the video. Then the nose cone goes over the top. Then we can insert the post into the bottom of the cup and attach the ejection plate at the bottom of that. These will be epoxied in place. And here it is all fitted together and wired up. In this configuration, the Strato Logger altimeter is set up to detect Apogee and signals the servo timer to activate the servo. 
So let's now have a look at the details of how the horizon mechanism works. Here is a simplified cross-section of the mechanism. We've omitted all of the electronics and servo motor. Here is the stretched rubber band that is trying to force the nose cone out. The retention levers, though, are preventing that from happening by locking onto the body tube at these points. As long as the servo horn is holding down this lever, the mechanism stays locked. As soon as the servo horn moves out of the way, the nose cone starts moving upwards, lifting the levers and moving them out of the way. The ejector plate pushes the parachute out of the body tube until the ejector plate is clear and the parachute is free to fall out. Here you can see how the levers lift up when the rubber band pushes on the nose cone. The levers are free to move, but when we turn it on, you can see the servo horn move over the levers and lock them in place. When the deployment is activated, the servo horn moves out of the way and the levers are free to move again. The rubber band is just threaded through a hole in the body wall and is prevented from coming through by a piece of wire made from a paper clip. This is how it goes together. We first put the rubber band on the ejector plate and then we put the parachute in. And then press the whole thing down until the levers pop out of the sides. Then we can turn it on and lock the levers in place. The nose cone then gets put on top of that. You can see that the system is armed because the LED shines through the nose cone. Let's do some bench tests. Of course on the actual rocket the parachute short cord is attached to the rocket as well as the nose cone. We don't have it connected in these tests. You can see there's quite a bit of force to get the parachute to pop out. So the next step was to do some flight testing. Before attaching it to the horizon sustainer we wanted to do some lower altitude tests. We attach it to the top of one of our regular rockets. For the first couple of launches we used a 21mm nozzle to try and get a little more acceleration to better simulate what the deployment mechanism will experience during the Horizon launch. Two, one, go. Of course this 25G acceleration is only about a quarter of what it will actually experience at the upper end of the design envelope. Here is an onboard view of the deployment. We flew it a total of three times and the last launch was a nice slow foam launch just for the fun of it. The whole mechanism is designed to withstand at least 100g of acceleration. Each screw that you add to the design is the equivalent weight of a hundred screws. The 45 gram parachute and shock cord alone weigh as much as a four and a half kilo house brick. Because the parachute will weigh so much at launch, the actual ejector plate has to sit on top of the pressure chamber like this so it doesn't snap off. The entire mechanism with everything in it weighs as much as six house bricks, which is around 26 kilos or 57 pounds. That's 26 kilos pushing on top of the pressure chamber during launch. So how do we attach it to the rocket? All the force is transferred through the bottom edge of the body tube sitting on top of the pressure chamber. To stabilize it laterally, we glue a PVC ring to the top of the pressure chamber. Then we use eight screws to hold the deployment body tube to this PVC ring. Here is a cross section of how it attaches to the top. The screws don't really support any of the weight. They help hold the body tube in place when the parachute deploys and tugs on the side of the tube. 
And here is the PVC ring epoxy to the top of the pressure chamber. You can also see the steel pin here that acts as an anchor point for the parachute shock cord. Here we're attaching the deployment mechanism body tube to the PVC ring, making sure that it's all well aligned with the rest of the rocket. Then we tap the holes in the PVC plastic for the M3 screws. Later these holes will also be slightly countersunk. So that's the Horizon deployment mechanism. Now we've actually got two of these uh, because we've built two sustainers and speaking of which in the next episode we're going to finish the sustainer pressure chambers, uh, run them through some tests and you'll see how that works. So anyway that's all for this week, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.